if you claim you are a man courageous enough come to ghana and make this allegation and let's see whether we will not meet in court said a lot of things that day about you and what you are doing in parliament you never addressed any of them the only thing you wanted to address was oh you never flew with the president we all know you, not, you never fly with the president you were in the u.s you visited the bronx mosque you were there let me tell you you see these lies that you've told me i will never forgive you the god that you claim to serve whether it is uh, uh lulovi whether it is a, a tree whether it is a dog will punish you that god will punish you the pain that you have put me and my supporters through with this lies god will punish you in the way that you least expect <laughs> I was saying for Honorable Muntaka, MP for Aswanse constituency, and on a near bread walk, Kessy Kevin Taylor say, Wamana Copain Simu and someone Kevin Eke Captain Swo. I was saying Kevin Taylor say, Honorable Muntaka, Aswanse for Mona Muniswoye. Was so one yan 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 was say, US Hono, Ukosia Napo, any KK support can occre, Yana Mokoye. And Honorable Muntaka said, I mean, Koshi will be a Sukosia no can occre, so one can occur, and never made the babble and sing with tape or made the babble and sing. Wo ona bu muntaka, wo ye criminal ankasa. Ebu siya ne ano, ena ona bu muntaka ni ya bra ona so kesi Kevin Taylor se. En sama waka no krebi ya nuwe wum. Bara ansa ne beko akoti ya ona bu muntaka di ano. Yen koti ya Kevin Taylor di ane kakra emraya ba. Ebe ko akoti ya ona bu di ano. This is just the beginning because Haruna di ebe ba muntaka di ebe. En demi ko di mi chama di ki tuwe bi. Now this is the statement he has released. And on Facebook I saw this. Unless it is not him, but from my checks, this is the official page of Muntaka Mubarak on Facebook. My attention has been drawn to some malicious fabrication about me traveling as part of President's delegation to the UN General Assembly or meet the President of Ghana in New York. Let me say this on record. I have not been part of any delegation, government delegation, or met President or any of his executive privately, or met the President or any of his executives privately or publicly to talk or do anything. Let me say, those whose agenda is to destroy NDC but claim to work for it should know that this kind of allegations go a long way to destroy the party and party not to build, to destroy the party and not to build it. I want all right-thinking Ghanaians to disregard it. If anyone, both in government or outside government, have any evidence of me being part of any delegation to the United States or the USA, should please come forward with it. I remain resolute to work hard for my country, Ghana, my constituency, Asawase, and my party, NDC. For those who make it their trade to circulate lies and try to make me look bad in the eyes of the right-thinking Ghanaians, uh, should know that there is God. <laughs> there is a God that we all serve, and I leave them to their maker. This last statement from Mubarak shows that he's guilty of something. Yes. On my show, I made Ghanaians understand that Muntaka is in the United States. The president and his entourage are also in the United States. I never said, say, you flew with the president to, Ghana, to the United States. Now, Muntaka, I want to let you understand something. This idea of thinking, say, you can use Quran, you can use God to run away from the issues, you know, it is never going to work. Listen, I said a lot of things that day about you and what you are doing in parliament. You never addressed any of them. The only thing you wanted to address was, oh, you never flew with the president. We all know you, not, you never flew with the, uh, fly with the president. You were in the U.S. You visited the Bronx Mosque. You were there. There were government officials in the system. They were also here in New York City. Now, let me tell you this. This kind of, I want people to think that I love the party. I want people to think, say, media, I'm working for the NDC. You are the same person who told Ghanaians, say, you see, NDC brought you to power. NDC brought you to parliament. But your priority is to make sure that other things are sorted before the NDC. But the NDC agenda, NDC's agenda, ah, we all know, no, it's a national agenda. So when the NDC brings somebody to parliament, NDC is carrying the person to parliament to go and promote or propagate NDC's agenda, which is a national agenda. If you don't believe that, then you don't deserve to be leading the NDC in parliament. It's, it's as clear as that. That is why Ekufuado, when he was choosing his ministers, he never chose any NDC person to be his minister because he has an agenda. And that agenda is a party agenda they believe is a national agenda. So if you sit there and you say everything is about national, so the party should be neglected. Then you don't need to lead the party. That is why today you are doing business in parliament. And I am telling you that you are taking money to pass criminals. 
during the vetting, you did it. Now you have done it. You, Muntaka. Today, I will not go too deep. I will take my time. I will do a whole show on you. But I want to ask you this. How many contracts? How many contracts? Time and Napo, Aya Education Minister, how many contracts did you get? Don't try. Menewa, next week, like I will resign. When you leave parliament as a leader, the, 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 the NP, the DC part will not collapse. Me say, during Napo, because I know your very good friend is Napo. When Napo was education minister, how many contracts did you get? You know me, when I ask these questions, Minim said, yeah, but it was don't, don't, I want you to be answering questions. I heard that this weekend, so many media houses called you to talk. You say you are not going to talk. Speak. Tell me, Napo, a year education minister, how many contracts did you get? You, your best friend, Napo. Tell me, no education minister, how many contracts did you get? Come out and tell Ghanaians you didn't get a dime. Nothing. Now, I want to ask you a second question. Me say, two weeks, you should resign. Because if you don't, I will collapse that your political career. And I'm coming to Haruna Idrisu too. Now, Last week, KK Sapon and Napo were in Canada. They slept through and they came to the US. Did you meet them or not? Don't dare me and sit there and write things that people want to sell your image. What image do you have? Me say KK Sapon and Napo, they were in Canada. They, they went through and they came to the US. Did you meet them? Did you have a meeting with them? Stop that. I say that if you think you are not making money, from that role you are playing, leave and let somebody also come and not make money. Because the moment you are there to protect that position, it means you are using that position for something. This is just the beginning. Mr. Mimao, two weeks. Two weeks, you and Haruna. The things are ever about out. You, know? you see the GMPC deal there? I don't want to go in it. Shut up. Okay, I'm going to Kevin Taylor and Ebron Samson. What's this? NDC party a big now. Honorable Muntaka, Minority Leader Haruna Idrusu, I was here, you mean a free NDC name, eh, and some of you are going to so. Now, no, and now, Honorable Muntaka, MP for us, one say, Akasa, and any boy for power, can't sell. Was say, Kevin tell us how you bear my bragana. Never accuse you, I'm going to die, say, what it's your brochure on our auto manino, when your microphone, our Kasa Kasa. Was say, one no one kind the last time, umpa. One in a po, any cake is upon a cassa, and put no cushia womo. And since I'm not working in a war truffle, I was saying, I am quite near what's here on Nabu Muntaka. Mess also best subscribe to one Ghana TV. Now be like here videos. It's just too unfortunate that I'm forced to come on live Facebook to respond to a bigot, somebody who hates our country. I pretend to love it. Whose talk is just to malign innocent persons with lies and he tells the lies with so much confidence that people, some gullible people, tend to believe him. Everything that I'm going to say, I swear by the God that created me, that I'm saying what I know is the truth. Not because I want to entertain someone like Calvin Taylor, but because of the innocent thousand and one gullible people across the globe who are finding it very difficult to read between the thin line to know who is speaking the truth and who is lying. Let me start by saying that I am not a fan of him. I don't listen to him. I hardly get time to listen to him. But unfortunately, his last few episodes seem to consistently mention me and people draw my attention and a lot of people i mean well-meaning Ghanaians, don't respond to him i'm sorry that i cannot continue to hold on when he concerned these lies 
I have had the great privilege of serving my people from Aswansi in Parliament for over a decade and a half. I mean, I'm not anywhere near saying that I am intelligent more than any other person in Aswansi or wiser than any other person in Parliament. But I know all those who have worked with me who attest to the fact that I'm so passionate about what I do. I've consistently defended my constituency and the records are there for everybody to see. I have consistently defended my party since I was in parliament. I have consistently defended every flag bearer that we've had with all the energy in me. Kevin Taylor, let me tell you, I challenge you to bring everything that you claim to have. I am very ready for you. Let me start by saying that I don't work to you. I don't work to you. I work to my constituents. But you see, the kind of allegations that you are leveling is so shocking that you claim to be a journalist and you know the tenets of good journalism. The tenet of good journalism is that when you get facts, you give people that facts are around them, the so-called facts, to authenticate or otherwise. You cross-check, you provide evidential evidence of what you, you are saying. You don't just go talking on top of your head because probably some people might have given you some wrong information and then you use it to run. Let me tell you, I bought my ticket to the U.S. I swear the God that I serve, Allah, I have never met anybody whether in government or their surrogates or or discuss look i i don't need you don't i don't owe you to tell you why i'm in the u.s i don't owe you i'm a citizen of ghana and parliament is on recess i have every right to travel to travel privately to wherever i want to go i don't owe you the obligations but if it is about u.s let me tell you, first, you lied that I was in bronze in a mox. I challenge you. If I'm in the U.S., the mox that I attend are Mount Hope, Yenkasa, or Anasa. I challenge you to provide high evidence. And those of you in bronze, this is to tell you the lies that is peddling. Have you seen me in any of the, your mocks? No. In fact, since I came to the U.S., I've not gone anywhere even near Manhattan. I have not met anybody, not even an MPP person inside this U.S. The only time I would say I met somebody that is close to MPP was on the flight when I was coming and I met one of our guys in my, my constituents, Alice Rack. Who came for us? Oh, he wanted us to have a picture. Well, I mean, he's MP. Even though I know all his uh, utterances against me as the member of parliament for Aswansi, but I, 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 I oblige him. In fact, I returned from New Mexico only this morning. All this while I was in, they call it the uh, Abukaki. A younger brother, doctor, who is there, Dr. Ewuza, I'm sure if he's listening, he and his family will attest the fact that yes, I was with them. Kevin Taylor, let me tell you, whoever told you that me, I've met KK Sapo and Napo, I can't remember the last time we spoke, since parliament went on recess, I can't even remember. Yes, we are brothers, we grew up together, attended the same school. His father was like a father to me. But I challenge you, please, you claim that he has given me a contract. I challenge you.
to provide any contact that me, Muntaka, has received from Napo. If you care to know, all the classroom blocks that MPs fight for during formula, get from formula, try to push to their constituency, not even one has been built throughout the tenure of Napo as MP. Because when I get it and I take it to the district, the district frustrates it. And I can mention them to you. I brought a contract for Nurul Amin. It was never done. The people of Aswansi Jailai, they know. And I stated all this when I was campaigning. You can go to my Facebook and go to my record on Zuria when I was stating the things that I brought, the things that I lobbied for, and how they were got, they got frustrated and all that. And check whether any of the con con contra contractors who are supposed to do those things have any relations with to me or go to uh, auditor general uh, what you call register general and see whether any of those companies are related to me those classroom books are about uh, uh, what you call do i mean it's not been done i brought nuria it was not done abubakar siddiq it was not constructed i complained to napo severally he was saying that, look, this is the local district because we give the classroom blocks to the districts. And I'm witness instances where he tries to make course. Why are they frustrating the construction of those things? None was done. So I challenge you to provide contact that me, God for Napo, and did. So you can show where they were and how I benefited from Napo being a uh, decent. So you see, that's palpable lie. Absolute lies from you. You see, you're not decent. Decent people, when they hear things, they try to cross-check. Because you are not decent and you are so raw, you are so naive about the things that we do, you even bother yourself. If I were you, when people were telling you that, oh, they are cutting contract, they are short-chaining all of us, they are sitting in power, they are not doing anything. If I were you, what I would do, is that I'll go and look for the hands that of Parliament on all the things that happened and see the debate and see what everybody said. If you care to know, call any of the MPs, call anybody, whether in the seventh parliament and even this eighth parliament. In fact, the MPP have labeled me, Muntaka, as obstructionist. As if me, all I do in the chamber is to subtract what they are doing. But let me school you about what we do in Parliament. You see Parliament that you see there, and like any other Parliament in the world, leaders are only coordinators. They only coordinate. We are just like class professors. We are not even headmasters. Nowhere near. We are just like class professors. Every business of government, whether it is private or government, it first comes to the floor of the house. And I'm schooling you. Go and take our hands out and uh, go and take our standing orders and learn so that you can stop this naivety and show you how stupid you are. When it comes to the floor of the house, it is referred to a committee of parliament. No business just comes to the floor and gets down on the floor. When it comes to the floor, it's referred to the committee. None of our committees today in Parliament has members less than nine. Because the least committee we have is 18. And because of the narrow nature of our presence, 18, we have nine, they have nine. When the committee is 20, they have 10, we have 10. It's only when the committee is 25. Because they are wanted. I've heard you say, oh, they are wanted seven, we are wanted seven. He said, are you that naive? Didn't you hear that the independent chose to work with them? And he has consistently been voting with them. And in voting with them, it makes them 138. You don't know that. And you don't know that in Parliament, 99% of the business that goes into Parliament, the decision is taken. Go and read our constitution. From Article 102 all the way to 109. You see how parliament decisions are taken. Simple majority. If you are 151 vo votes, yes. 49 votes, no. The 51 takes the day. So any day that we have to do anything, 
and we take and turn position, and they take and turn position, they are 138 and one, we are 137. So let me go take you back. So when the business comes and it goes to the committee, each of the committee we have leaders that we have chosen. So you come to finance committee, our lead person there is Atu Fosin, assisted by Adongo, Honorable Isaac Adongo. You go to roads and transport, our lead person there is Kwame Aboja. You go to mines and energy, our lead person there is Jinapo. You go to foreign affairs, our lead person there is Honorable Kutetu Ablakwa. You go to education, our lead person there is Honorable Peter Nachu. You go to lands and natural resources, our lead person there is Honorable Rashid Popo. In that order. Subsidialization, our lead person there is Dominic Aini. Our lead person for public accounts is Honorable Kulutia Averji. That is how Parliament is structured. So every business that comes goes to those committees. So when you say we are cutting deals and we are compromising, do you know why you are in that saying? You are saying that every committee of this Parliament, of we having in some, the least nine, so for example, if you say Committee on Mines and Energy, you are saying that Jinapo, together with his other colleagues who are on that committee, all of them get compromised, led by us. That's what you are saying. If you say that there's something on foreign affairs and then we are compromised, you are saying that Honorable Ablakwa and all his colleagues who are there are being compromised together with us. Does it make sense to you as a rational human being if you care to know how parliament works, does it make sense to you that we are just sitting there cutting deals? So let me tell you, if you care to know how we work, when any business goes to the committee, they go and deliberate, and when there are issues, the first thing, the rankings will run to the leaders. We've gone there's A, B, C, D, but this is our position that we think we have to take as a caucus. And I challenge you, to ask any of the ranking or any of our chairperson whether any of them has ever brought something, no matter how small it is, that me, Muntaka, did not assist him to fine tune it and prepare for our attack. Whether the person wants to do a press conference, whether the person wants to do a press release, even during this recess, if you care to know. Find out from Kwame Boja. Why well, he wanted to talk about the uh, motor, to, motor way with the, uh, what, uh, what do you call it, the motor angels uh, contract that's no, uh, been awarded without, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, going through the post, uh, procurement process. Ask him. You draft the statement, you bring it, I'll forward it to the leader, we'll look at it. Sometimes we'll forward it to the party leadership, they look at it, we'll all agree, oh, this test is good, let it go. Won't we'll work in unison. I heard you talk about, oh, he's a black guy that is screaming. That is foreign affairs issue. And ask him when he was filing the question. We had to assist him to get the question on the floor for him to ask. When they ran away and broke. But in parliament, that's what I'm saying. They read our standard orders and understand how parliament runs. It doesn't run like the way you are running. You just sit because there's a mic before you. You just speak anyhow. You think that's how a country is run. You think that's how parliament runs. It sounds like the way you run your home. It doesn't run that way. Ask him the effort that we made. And I also want you to ask him when we came on recess, whether when he had this issue he wanted, whether he has spoken to any of us. At least I can say he hasn't spoken to me. One picture not two wanted to speak about education. He called me. We looked at the test. He issued it as Press release. When Akando wanted to even go around the current rounds that they are going, asking, we met him over, we discussed it, we agreed. I had to raise the funds from our caucus resources to support the health committee to, to, to go around. When he had to do the press releases and the press conferences, ask him. Sometimes he's in this, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, constituency. I say, look, because you're in the constituency, just get the test. Let's look at it. Let's take it around. When it is done, we'll issue it as a press release. We coordinate. So when you sit and ignorantly try to mislead our gullible support, you are you NDC. Since when did you become NDC? Since when? When we were dying to get power in 2008, where were you? Are you NDC? Because you get so gullible people, they don't even know the processes that 
things go through. You just sit because there's a mic in front of you. You just scream and tell all these lies on innocent persons. Look, I'm a typical Zongo boy. I challenge you. Every audio that you have, you claim me, Muntaka. Bring, bring, please bring it out. Any evidence that you have that me, look, it is to a point that even my colleagues are saying that, look, I'm arrogant because I always tell them, look, I don't like unnecessary meetings. If it's not a sanctioned meeting by the house, I don't want to be part of it. And I challenge you to bring whatever evidence that you claim to have. People meet me from every space of life. I will insist. Ask a lot of people who try to meet me. Say, no, come to my office in Parliament and I'll give you where my office is because that is where my office is and that's where I'm supposed to operate. I live in Accra. Ask how many people get the opportunity to meet me in my house. I don't because I don't want people to be meeting me in a kind of private arrangement that could create suspicion. I always insist, come and meet me in my office. So if you get to know, I've never met Napo in the U.S. I've never met KK Sapo in the U.S. I've never met anybody in the MPP. Not even in the NDC. Since I came here. Because the purpose for which I came is what I'm pursuing. And I'm not obliged to tell you why I'm here. All I'll tell you is that if you turn your courageous, just come to Ghana and say the things that you are saying so that we can see you. So you can defend yourself in a court, law court. You don't sit in the U.S. and accuse people in Ghana and say that, oh, you can go to court. No, come to Ghana. So that you accuse me within our land and I will see you within our land. But you don't take the opportunity because you have this privilege to sit in front of a mic, to just speak anyhow. Let me tell you. I, very hardworking, very decent, you can say whatever you want. I don't, I don't begrudge you. All those who know me will tell you I'm very hardworking. And I say, with a greater respect, I didn't finish school and come to, into politics. I worked in the private sector. I rose to the rank. I was, I mean, commanding a lot of respect where I was before. I was begged to come and join because I was very supportive of NDC. On election days, I spend my own resources to support other candidates. You can find out from Musa Ahmed in 1996. You can find out from all the others, Musa Ahmed in 2000. You can find out from the, the, the family of Dr. Jibril. And the people saw that I deserve to lead them. And I challenge you, if you knew my conscience in 2005 and how my conscience is today, you won't sit and be speaking this rubbish that you are talking about. He's selfish. He's only thinking about himself. Do you know who is thinking about himself? It is you. Because some big gods are using you. Why? The leadership of Parliament, how many are we? We are five. Harun Ejusu, the leader. Kulechi Aveji as the deputy leader. Me as the chief whip. Ahmed Ibrahim as the deputy. And Konfordoyo as the second deputy. Why are you always mentioning the two of us? What is your interest? You see how God caught you? When you were saying that, oh, they are doing a Muslim agenda. Oh my goodness, shame on you. You should be bowing your head in shame. The things that you are doing. Because, you see, you are a bigot. And you are allowing bigots to use you to think that you can destroy us. You didn't make me. And I challenge you. Bring out anything that you claim that you have. I, I worked so hard, tirelessly, tirelessly, final from my colleagues in Parliament. I threw myself in the chamber. I have learned a lot. Now you can't get me to be doing the wrong thing. We have a country to run. We have a party to run. We have our feroce consequences to run. We have our families to run. You don't come and tell. Do you know how we win elections? Do you know what we go through? To, to win election. Do you know how we campaign? You think they're sitting on the radio and just accusing people is what is campaigning? In fact, you are a disincentive to NDC because a lot of uh, neutral persons hear you and they think that you are one of us and they hate us. No, you are not. Since when did you join NDC? Do you know 
the, 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 the sweat that we've gone through, do you know how much of our back we've broken to build this party to where it is? You don't know anything. Come, when we're campaigning, why didn't you come and do the door to door? Why didn't you come and we run the, the, the key feed? Why didn't you come for us to do the posters? Why? You just sit on, 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 on. On, on, on Facebook and screaming and leveling le on national allegations against people is what wins election. Please, be one. If you claim you are a man, courageous enough, come to Ghana and make this allegation and let's see whether we will not meet in court. But you see, when you sit and take the privilege of sitting in the U.S. and then, and I, and I say this, we are talking about cases. You see the pain that you try to put on innocent persons saying that me, I met, or I came, this sponsored my coming, and I met them. Why? If I want to meet Akufado, can't you I can, I can walk to his office. He's the president of Ghana. He's not the president of MPP. If I want to meet him, I'll walk to the, 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 the castle, or the, yes, uh, the, flags, the flags house, and see him. In an official capacity, I will send a note and I will go and see him because I'm a member of Parliament and I'm a Ghanaian. He's a, he's a Ghanaian president. Haven't you seen His Excellency John Damani Mahama and other heads, former heads of state go to meet him in his office for deliberations? Does it make does that make His Excellency a, a traitor to NDC? Is that your thinking? Is, is that why you are told how a country is built? We will hold their legs to the fire. Go and look at the debate when we're doing the Sputnik version and listen to what all of us have said. Go and look at the videos. Go and look at the answer and check and see whether our contributions on the floor give the slightest suggestions that we are, we are treated and we are, we, are, we are compromised. Let me tell you. You see these lies that you've told me? I will never forgive you. The God that you claim to serve, whether it is uh, uh, Lolovi, whether it is a, a tree, whether it is a dog, will punish you. That God will punish you. The pain that you have put me and my supporters through with these lies, God will punish you in a way that you least expect. Because God knows, I didn't come to U.S. to meet anybody. I did not meet anybody. I have not met any of them. But let me tell you, if I want to meet Napo, why, what prevents me from seeing him? He's a minister of state. If I want to see KK Sapo, he's the chief executive of GMPC, a national oil company. If there's genuinely an official thing that I need for my constituency, if you get to know, I am pushing for a lot of things that GMPC have been doing for other... Look, if you go to Sakafia Islamic, there's a sex classroom block there. I got GMPC to build for them. That is what a responsible politician does. But go and find out from them. When they were building it, whether I even know the contractor who built it, I'm not those type of politicians. I'm not those type. I'm not those type. So please, you, let me tell you. You claim that we are agents. You are rather agent. You are an agent of MPP who is trying to destroy NDC. Because obviously that was where you were. It's only Nana Kufado that you disagree with. That's why you claim to be speaking for NDC. You are not. You are not. You, you are not NDC. And for those of NDC who are spending time and energy listening to this so-called journalist who doesn't have ethics, journalism ethics, he doesn't have respect for, for anybody. He just speaks anyhow. No human value. No, I mean, look, you can say the truth without this lies and name calling. If you have evidence about things, you can put it out. Today, Ghana, with all manner of stories going around, if you hear something as a responsible journalist, what you do is to give those people the benefit of the doubt. Look, this is what I've heard. What is the situation like? Get the other person's side. The facts that you have, cross-check it. That is what we do. 
Don't put blame. You are saying that, oh, the reason why we were put there, we haven't achieved it. Do you know how many we were? We were 106. Nine lost their primaries. Nine voluntarily decided that they were no contestant. So 88 of us went into election and asked our police the outrages that we, the minority leadership, with our colleagues sponsored. Pardon MPs, sometimes 10 to a particular area, go, let's do an outreach. We fought hard. And now we are 137. So if you care to know, we are very hard working persons in leadership. And remember me, I've been government whip before. I serve under Babin. And this lies that you are saying. I challenge you, whoever told you that, let that person come and tell you that I'm saying that the person is a liar. I'm a member of FET, I'm a member of NEC, I, I, I attend the political committee meeting, I was there with the, at the Council of, uh, uh, Council of Elder. Nowhere did Babin say that the problem of NDC is the two leaders. You are lying. You are a big liar. And I challenge you, if you say that's a fact, bring it out. You see, you see this bigotry that you've gotten yourself entangled in, you can't destroy NDC. You are too small to destroy NDC. But for those of you who claim to love NDC and are listening to him and thinking that what he's doing, oh, he's speaking for Ghana. Is it how to speak for a country that requires a lot of energy and time? Those who are virtually breaking their back, fighting every day to get the right things done. Look, go and see the, the, the before we close on the, the business of the house. So many tax waivers, we insisted that those tax waivers, we needed some more information. But you see, let me take you back to school. In, in Parliament, there are three types of voting, three types. The, one, the first one is by voice vote. So the speaker says, those who are in favor say aye, then they will scream aye. And those again say no, then they also claim no. And then the speaker uses his discretion to say, oh, the yes have it, or the no have it. And when the speaker does that, our standing orders, 113 to all the way to 115, gives you the opportunity to challenge and say, the speaker, I challenge your voice votes and I want a head count. And then you can have the head count. That's the second one, where everybody stands and then you count. Go check our standing orders in the Constitution. The only time you get to have secret ballot is when you are removing somebody from office or you are putting someone in office. I mean, you go back, things that we as a party have agreed to put behind us so that we can build a formidable party into the 2024. Ask yourself what you are doing. How is it going to help the party? How is it going to help the party? You want to sow seed of disunity between we members of parliament and our rank and file. Do you know the consequences of it? Because you have no idea. You don't know what happens. It's the MPs that are carrying the consequences. So if you do so much of this and there's so much antagonism and the MPs pull back, ask yourself whether we'll be able to even get the hundred and six the last time we were having. You have no idea because you see you are so naive and you find out you think that intelligence is speaking flu uh, 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 fluent english no you keep talking about the vetting let me school you everywhere in parliament every committee of parliament can only recommend can only recommend to the plenary I help people misleading and confusing people. Look, the 26 of us on appointments committee, even if all of us, 26 unanimously say that Mr. Kevin Taylor should not be made a minister, that will still remain a, a recommendation. We have to take it to the floor and they'll be voting. And because we are putting you in office, there'll be secret ballot. You see the naivety. The secret ballot that allow us to be able to cross over and get some members on the MPP to vote for us. That same secret ballot 
that has not produced a result that you don't like you are blaming some people ask yourself when they lost the position of speaker did you see them killing their uh, leaders do you know how long honorable chairman have been in the leadership of parliament let me school you when i came to parliament he was a deputy whip not long he became the chief whip then he got ready to become the deputy leader then he became the leader and if you care to know he had been the leader since january 7th 2013 yet with all his experience from deputy whip to whip to deputy leader to leader he lost the speakership did you see npp doing what you are trying to do to the ndc party do you see what what the, did you see mpp trying to do that to the leadership of their parliament their leadership in parliament and you claim that you are doing this to help ndc what you are doing is that you are drilling the effort of those of us in parliament two weeks let me tell you we are going nowhere we challenge you myself and Haruna, we are going nowhere Anybody who tells you that, oh, there's some this thing we can remember, let them try it and let's see. We are not kids in the party. Do you know how much discussions we've had behind the scene? You want us to come and put it before the, 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 the general public? We won't do that. That is what leadership is about. If leadership is about everybody in the house knowing what is going on in their house, I don't think you even had the audacity to be sitting to be talking about what you are saying. So if that's your thinking, you are daydreaming. Let me tell you. As one say, just find out. Since I started contesting, all the primaries I've attended, I've, I've gone through. Go check. I have never paid any delegate to vote for me. I give them TNT, and the TNT I've given, the highest, the highest. You hear people giving television, divisions, thousand dollars, what and what. Find out from the people of Aswansi. Our slogan is Bakudiba Nesoye Yani. It is love. It is not money. The highest I've ever given the delegate in my constituency. You can call and find out. It's in the cities, and that was even the last one. Is that the last one? And the cities. Estimated the cost of transport, the lunch, and probably dinner. Even that, I was insisting I was going to give them 50 because it is not about paying people money. But ask my constituents when people are in dire need, I'll spend my last password to save them. People have been sick. I've gotten them, uh, what do you call it, uh, their hospital bills, thousands I'll pay. People have gotten scholarship to study abroad. The family cannot afford the ticket. I bought ticket for them. But I'm not the type who go around sharing people money. You think I'm stupid? I'm not as stupid as you. And I challenge you that if you claim that you are courageous, come to Ghana and make this your allegation and see whether we will not sue you. And then you see the level of your foolishness. What kind of nonsense is that? You just sit down and you don't know how old are you? Do you know when we started this? Do you know how much sacrifices that we have made? Go and find out from Aswansi. Under this government, you, are you not one of those who are saying that the Pelele have let it to rot and this is to vote for against me? You've seen the hypocrisy. The people that I'm in bed with, they cannot even do the When we, our government, under a French government, had given us a grant of 36 0.5 million euros to do the drain. And as a member of parliament, let me tell you, what I have to do is to file questions, get the ministers to come to answer. I got them. They pretended to go and start, and then they left. And I'm on my way to try to bring them again. Why did they stop? And up to now, they've not done the work. Drains that we started. Go to Spetin Boom. Let the people from Spetin Boom are listening. Drains that we started four years, five years now, it was left just as we left it. If I'm in bed with them, they won't do it. Every day, I'm putting pressure to get those things even completed. They are not minding me. For the past four and a half years, not a single drain was done in my concern. I've just told you, the 
classroom blog that I got through Get Fan, that you are lying that I got contract for Napo, that was sent to the district. I've mentioned they've not been done for the past five years. And you sit, and because you have no manners, you are no cultured, you're unethical in doing the work of journalism. Simple cross checking you wouldn't do. This thing I'm threatening. I challenge you. Bring every audio and every document that you claim you have. What kind of thing is this? What kind of thing is this? You claim to be NDC. Come and change our own and I. Come. Come. Look. Go around and mention all the things that you know about me. I'm not an ender. I won't pretend to be one. I have my weakness, but I will tell you, my colleagues in Parliament will tell you, if it comes to those that people in the chamber can always run to, I can pay to, they will tell you to, it is me. If it comes to the chamber and the people on the opposite side, MPP, are so scared of when it comes to cross-checking and trying to insist that the right thing is done in the chamber, I can bet you, even if you have to pick two from our, our caucus, I will be one. You can find out. If you have friends in the MPP, they will tell you. So please, don't, don't, don't dare. I challenge you. I challenge you. What kind of behavior is this? That we think we are bigger than NDC. How? We are members of NDC and we fought to the ranks to be where we are. So those bigots who are telling you, hey, and then you see uh, your mama is not in her, uh, Babi is not in her, Haruna is not in her, Muntaka is not in her. Oh, all of a sudden you have forgotten that I'm from, uh, from Asante region. People, those who are telling you this, they've forgotten that I'm from Asante region. I am from Asante region. I am from Asante region. That's where my constituency is. And I can bet you, I know that I have very wonderful colleagues. In my caucus, I'll tell you, they'll tell you. Everything that comes, I know those to consult. I know those that can help. I can put them together. Please, can you look at this? What do we do? We we'll always share views. Come to a conclusion, agree. I'll be the first to call the party leadership. This is what we are thinking. What, what is your view? Put those views before we pursue them. You won't come and be doing this and think that I will just leave you. I will get your time. Come out and I'll, I'll come back. Come. And we'll be running a, 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 a marathon. I'm sorry. Those of you who are saying that Muntaka don't mind him. I mean, this is guy that you don't. No, I won't allow him to be doing this because he puts the gullible people who don't know how Parliament is run and the things that are being run. He makes them confused. They don't know which is the truth. And sometimes they say silent means consent. I'm not that type. I'm not that type. We fought hard to where we are. Haruna Idrisu has fought so much for this party. He worked so hard for this party. Youth organizer, tell me what has he not done for this party? All those that are telling, telling nonsense and telling what and what. Ask them his contribution. Ask them his contribution. Find out how many consensus we try to support. Try to bring on board. Many of our colleagues try to groom. Try to show them. most of our even peers and seniors, anytime we are doing something, we bring them together. Look, let's put our heads together. We have a committee of rankings to the center. Almost everything, I dedicate time. Every week, Wednesday, we meet. These things that are before us, what do we do? What are the cons? What are the problems? Oh, this thing, please, can, you, can we speak to the office of the uh, flag bearer to get his view? Can we speak to the party leader to get their view? You can't sit and make it look as if we are some monsters. Is that how to pay us? Is it, our, is it our crime that we fought so hard to get a speaker? I won't just call all NDC persons, especially my supporters and that of our own NDC. Please remain calm. 
These are people that have been hired. Because if you see the way they talk, you see, people hide them, give them wrong information. And Haruna, I mean, I'm sorry, leader. I'm very, very sorry. I know you've cautioned me not to talk, not to talk, not to talk. But look, we can't allow this guy to be doing what he's doing. We can't. But I just want to say our party leadership must wake up. If we allow this guy, we don't dissociate ourselves with what this guy is doing. He'll be putting our heads against each other. Yes, he'll be putting our heads against each other. Because if you're not careful, what we'll simply start doing is that we'll start accusing each other publicly. And that'll be too dangerous for all of us. And I just want to say that all well-meaning NDC persons, please, let's stay away from this guy. He's no one of us. His MPP, as he himself have always said, he only didn't like Nanado. That's why he's doing what he's doing. Remember in 2024, we will not be going with Nanado. So just ask yourself, will he be going back to his base? Or will he remain with us? You and I have been branch executives, constituency, rose through the ranks. Veterans spend all our youthful age in this. Are we going to allow this guy to create doubt on our minds? So he'll be, he'll be playing with our minds. Let us all be careful. I can tell you, I never met Napo in New York. I've never met KK Tapa. In fact, I was far away from New York until this morning. I've never been to any mocks at Bronx. <laughs> My boss they will tell you, I'm not the type who is scared. I've never been afraid of the truth. You claim you have audios, I encourage you to bring all of them out. I challenge you. You have any evidence of me or anybody compromising this? Bring it. Bring it. I'm sorry. All the the imams, the elderly, what said I should speak. Especially the minority leader. I'm really, really very sorry. I had to do this. Just to let people understand that we are not that inexperience. We are not that stupid. We work very hard. And you see, there's this nagging, so worrying thing. Every time they want to pitch you, so it's against JM. Hey, who and who are against JM? Ask him. When it comes to people who support him heavily, I challenge those who say Haruna against Haruna, this is against him. To come on and let's see. They who are claiming they are supporting him and what Haruna is doing on his behalf. What all of us are doing on his behalf. But obviously, we are a party. Sometimes things go your way. Some other time it may not really go your way. And sometimes it's very worrying and disappointing. But please, please, please. Don't dare impugn integrity. And if you want us to settle it in a way that is evidential, legal, come home where you can be sued and then we can go because I'm not a U.S. citizen. I cannot come to the U.S. here. I'm coming to see you. But you are a Ghanaian too. So that's a common denominator. Come home. So you come and make those allegations. So I'll see you. We'll be in a court where the evidence will be attest to, cross-check, and your facts, and we'll see how it will stand. I thank you all for your time. I'm sorry I've, I've kept you long with uh, my, my long talk, but it is, it, is, it is very worrying. And the better we in NDC wake up to this reality, because look, today he pays this person, the next day he pays another person. Before you realize, we'll all be fighting among us. We'll so the leadership of our party, I mean, the, your mama himself. So if you think I'm doing this for NDC, you are thinking stupid. I mean, somebody who is well cultured, who is well brought up. Do you speak? Will you speak to your father that way? Tell your mama. That if you think I'm working for NDC, you are thinking stupid. Hey! Well, for that, I'm not somebody who will listen to you. People just 
cut pieces of your video and sometimes I play them and sometimes I don't tell you this you get to hear some of them and uh, you pass by let us do things in a rational way like I said time and time again I am not an angel I have my weaknesses but one thing that you can be let's assured I'm a very loyal person and loyal to your cause and when I'm everybody in the house both sides respect me for that very 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 loyal to your cause if i don't if i don't like if i don't like something i don't need to hide it as i'll say it i'm not a pretender everybody in my party who is close to me knows that i'm not the type who pretends when i disagree with you i would disagree with you in a very strong pain that is me but don't dare don't dare but they do falsehood and lies if i want to make a profile why who says that, I mean, as a senior member of parliament, I cannot walk and see a minister or walk to see this. But care to know, find out for all the ministers, all of them, I won't say with the exception of this, if me come to the office, me, Muntaka, come to any of their office, find out for pen, and I swear to God, that is, this pen, 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 has never issued between myself and you put even a gun on me, me. I don't even have his number. So why this name calling? And you speak with so much confidence as if what you are saying. And I challenge you. Please, I challenge you. But please, if you know you are courageous and you believe in whatever you are saying, just come home and say it. And let us land in court so that we can all go through the due process. That is where they'll be finished. And then we'll see your ethical levels, your truthness level, and all that. I'm sorry I bored you guys with so much listen. I thank you very much for the opportunity to listen to me. And I pray that the, our team supporters, the NDC, will all wise up and know this guy, this guy is not one of us. He is on a mission to destroy because ask yourself what he's doing. How is he going to help us in 2024? If NDC, we are in parliament and we are divided and we are fighting among ourselves, how can we spend time to fight against MPP? How can we find time to keep our consensus? And what will happen in 2024? And let me tell you, whether you believe it or not, your parliamentary wing is a very crucial wing that helps in winning every election that I had of uh, the political party. I thank you very much for the opportunity, and I wish all of us well. Have a good night.